Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you three more activities to do with your stuffed animals. This is now, I'd say, a video series since this is part three and I have two other videos on this. But since I have played a bunch of different things with my stuffed animals as a kid, I had to share some more ideas. Now let's get started! Okay, the first activity I'm going to be doing is skydiving. Now I know this won't be for everyone, but someone did request this. And I haven't actually played this with my stuffed animals before, but in a previous episode of Ellie and Shelly, they did have to jump out of a helicopter and I made parachutes and stuff. Here's a clip from it. It was filmed a long time ago though, so that's why the quality is really bad. Just for the record, those were not stunt doubles, Ellie and Shelly did their own stunts. But it's really easy to make those parachutes. The first thing you need is some rubber bands. I luckily found one this big for the bigger stuffed animals, and you'll also need a bandana. This one might technically be a scarf, but you really just need a big square of fabric. Putting this together is really easy. Jerry here volunteered to skydive, so I'm just fitting the rubber band on him to make sure it fits. It's a little tight, but I really don't want this coming off. And now I can start tying the corners of the bandana onto the rubber band. For some reason, this took forever for me to do on camera, but it's actually really easy. I'm just trying to make sure the corners are still in the same order as they go around the rubber band. And I'm trying to space the knots evenly. And once I've done that, this is pretty much ready to go and I can put this on. I don't really have a way of clumping it into a nice neat backpack, but it's best to already have it open like this when you drop them. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the smaller one. This one's going to go on Cheddar, and I had to put it around her neck since the circle of the rubber band does have to be kind of flat for the parachute to work. But after tying on the bandana, this is ready to go, so now it is time for them to actually skydive. I am lucky to have a house with stairs, so I just drop them from the top of the stairs, but there is some other ways to do it if you don't have that. Okay, so I'm going to drop him from the stairs. Here we go. You can also throw them, but you'll want to make sure they go straight up so they go straight down and the parachute deploys. Oh, I'm sorry. That did not work. Okay, now let's try it with cheddar. Oop, I kind of hit the side a little. Here it is, one more time, cheddar skydiving. Nice. Now, if you're just doing the throwing method, I'd recommend kind of clumping it up at the top like this, then throwing. And I don't know if that works that well, but let me try again. One, two, three. Oh, she got some breeze there. next activity I'm going to be doing is a sleepover, and to set the mood, I'm actually going to build a whole fort for them to stay in, but this isn't necessary. This turned out bigger than I expected, so you definitely need some room for this, but I started out by placing some chairs around the area I wanted to put it in. And this first chair is just a normal sized chair I turned around, but then I used a smaller chair for the other one, which didn't end up being tall enough, so I had to use this huge roll of paper to make it taller. And it ended up being so much work, so just use two or three normal sized chairs. And I'm also laying down a cozy blanket to be the base. Now I can take a bed sheet and drape this over the top of the chairs. I had to move them around a little to make it work, but luckily I also have a bed that will kind of be a support. After fidgeting around with it for a while and adding that extra support, this is how it looked. I had to just cut the cameras to pull this together, but at least it turned out pretty good, I think. Luckily, my bed sheet was so big, I didn't really have to use any like clips or anything to hold it together. If anything, I just put something heavy on the parts I needed to stay down. 
Now here's what it looks like on the inside. I made sure to pull some of the sheet down from the sides to close it up. And I have a little flap on the top that I can fold down to close it and give them some privacy. But I'm gonna leave it open since I'm not finished with this. Now to work on the inside, I grabbed some pillows from my room to put on the sides to kind of hide the chairs and make it more cozy. And since they're normal size pillows in a stuffed animal size fort, they look huge, but at least it could cover a lot. And now I'm just gonna throw in some random stuffed animal size pillows. So they look really tiny, but I felt like it just fit the vibe. I'll link down below the video I showed how to make these, but some of them I just made a long time ago. And I also threw in some Sherpa fabric I have. It's not really a blanket, but it's super fuzzy. Another thing I'm gonna add and turn on later is this little lamp. I got this from Target for my own room and it makes these little star shapes with the light. If you're bringing in a lamp though, just make sure to not leave it unsupervised if it's plugged in. Now the last thing I'm gonna bring in is a sleeping bag since I just made it in my camping video. You could always just make temporary sleeping bags with blankets or shirts, but I think in my case, I didn't really need it because I made a fort so they can just sleep in there. Now it's not dark out yet, but while the lighting's still okay, I'm gonna bring in the stuffed animals attending the sleepover. I just kept it to three and all the pajamas they're wearing I've made in previous videos, so I'll link that down below. For what they're gonna be doing at the sleepover, I have a few things planned. Thinking back to all the sleepovers I went to, my friends and I would mostly just talk and sometimes act out stories with our stuffed animals. But I happen to have this tiny deck of playing cards, perfect for stuffed animals. I think I got it as a birthday giveaway or something. So one thing they can do is play cards or any other board game or game you make up. It's really up to you what they decide to do at the sleepover. I'm just throwing out some ideas. Another idea they could do is give each other makeovers. That's always fun. I made makeup supplies in a previous video, so I set that out so they could do each other's makeup. Okay, it is finally dark in the room, so I can turn on this nightlight, and this gave the fort a really magical look. It was just how I wanted it to be. Now, the final thing I had planned for them is to watch a movie, so you can do this on like a regular smartphone since that's a perfect size for a stuffed animal TV. But I have an iPad with a case that'll kind of stand it up, so I just decided to use this. And I went on Disney Plus and pulled up Monsters, Inc. because I recently watched Monsters University and had forgotten about how good of a movie it was, so I figured I should watch now the original again. And of course, we can't have a movie at a sleepover without some snacks, so I have a bowl of popcorn here that is real popcorn and some fake Girl Scout cookies I made in a previous video. This is really the only fake food I had that kind of counted as a snack, but Girl Scout cookies are great treats. Now it's time to just sit back, relax, and watch the movie. The last activity I'm gonna do is a stuffed animal spa. I'm gonna start by making a few things that aren't really necessary, but I feel like they just amp up that spa experience. The first thing I'm gonna make is a little gua sha, and that's one of those things that you kinda use to massage or sculpt your face. Chelsea used a normal sized one in her morning routine video, I think, but I wanted to make a smaller one for the spa. Looking back, I probably made it a little too small, but I guess it works for tiny stuffed animals too. So I'm basically just drawing out a gua sha shape on this thin piece of cardboard, and then I can cut this out, and I'm actually gonna trace this and cut out a second one to glue them together so it's a little bit thicker. And next, I'm going to paint this a kind of jade green, and I tried to swirl some darker green into the lighter color so it could get more of a swirl effect, but it all blended together for the first coat, so for the second one, I tried to make it more obvious. And after painting both sides and coating it with a little Mod Podge, this is how it looked. I'm going to be using this for the facial portion of the spa treatment. Next, I'm going to be making some little paper cucumbers to put on the stuffed animal's eyes. And this I would highly recommend making because even if this doesn't happen in real life, I feel like it just sells the whole thing and is kind of funny. I happen to have this circle paper punch, so I'm going to be using this to cut out my circles, but you could always just trace a round object and cut them out. I had some trouble with the first few, but I eventually got them. And now to turn them into cucumbers, I'm gonna start by taking a kind of light green marker and going around the edge. I ended up making this line thicker at the end though. Then I took a dark green marker and went around the edges of that. So just a thin line around there. 
And then for the inside, you can always leave them white, but I'm taking a light green color pencil and just lightly shading all over there. And lastly, I'm taking a little tan marker and drawing three seeds in kind of three different sections. That triangle I drew in the middle is not really accurate to a cucumber, so you don't have to do that. But that's pretty much it on how to make these cucumbers. The last thing I'm going to do is a really basic sheet face mask. And what you'll need for this is a large paper towel. I think I ended up only needing one of these panels though. I grabbed the stuffed animal I'm making this for and that's Chelsea and it'll fit other stuffed animals. And she does kind of have a snout so I got to take that into account later. I'm going to first cut out the main shape of this and that's really just an oval that'll fit on your stuffed animal's face. And next I need to make the holes for the eyes so I'm kind of just pinching where they are and then folding it in half to cut out those holes. And lastly, I need to make a cut for her nose and mouth area since that does stick out a lot. So I'm cutting kind of a smiley face shape around where her chin is. And that's pretty much it. For most stuffed animals, you probably only have to make these few cuts. I added a few more around the mouth though to help it bend more. And now I can fold this up and wet this when it's time for the facial. Now to finally set this up, I'm in the same room as before and I first want to add a little table and for that I'm going to be using this box. I think it has sketching supplies and it's pretty small but I'm going to use this to hold some hot towels. They're not actually hot but I just took some white face towels or hand towels and rolled them up. And next in this corner I'm going to add some candles. These two are fake and I actually have a ton of fake candles but just could not find them for this video. And I also brought in this real one that smells really good, so even if you don't light it, I feel like it just gives the room a nice scent. And lastly, I randomly found this lemon scented bar of soap in my cupboard, and the packaging was really pretty, so I thought it would just make a good decoration. Next, I'm going to be adding a massage table, and my grandma and grandpa have this little plastic lap tray that they're not using, so I thought this would be perfect for a table. But you could also use like a stool or really just a box or anything like that. And to make it look a little more like a massage table, I'm draping over some silk pillowcases over the top. And it's good that they also cover the sides. Next, I'm going to bring something in that I'm not even sure is a thing at spas, but I would always do this when I made spas a long time ago, and that is a mud bath. This is really easy to do. All you need is a container that your stuffed animal will fit in. I'm using this laundry basket that is really tall, but it's really the best one I have. And now to add the mud, which obviously isn't real mud, I'm taking a blanket that is brown on one side and fuzzy on the other. And I'm folding it together so only the brown side is facing out and stuffing that in my bin. And that is pretty much it. I left a little opening on the side so the stuffed animal could go under the blanket. The last thing I'm going to add is a little seating area. So that's just a pillow that you saw from before. It could be a waiting area for the massage table or the place where a stuffed animal gets a foot massage or pedicure. Looking back, I should have totally brought in that tiny chair I used for the fort, because that is the right size for a stuffed animal. One more thing I'm bringing in for decor are these clay water lily candlestick holders that I made for my Etsy shop, but no one has been buying them, so I have three laying around. And I feel like these are perfect for a spa, so I'm just setting them around as decoration. Now, one more thing I forgot about is that I wanted to do hot rock massages. so. I grabbed this little decorative bowl, which would have been perfect for a tiny stuffed animal mud bath, but I'm going to place my rocks in here. And I luckily live close to the beach, so I already had these like in my backyard from bringing them home. And I just rinsed them off, and some of them are really hot because they were sitting in the sun. But now I can just add them to this dish, and now this, I promise, is the last component to the spa. Here is the completed spa, and now it's time to bring in the customers. To really sell the spa experience, I'm going to put some of them in robes. I don't have too many of these. One I made in a previous video and another I have just from Build-A-Bear. But if you don't have robes, you could always wrap them in a hand towel. Another fun thing I like to do is wrap a towel around their head. I do this the same way I wrap towels around my hair. I place it at the back of their necks so it kind of covers their face. Then I twist it in the front and then pull it back. It is a bit of a balancing act though. Okay, now I'm going to finally let the stuffed animals start enjoying the spa, so I'm putting Monty in the mud bath. Unfortunately, um, most of it's cut off, but I just tucked him in there, and I feel like it's essential to add the cucumbers on his eyes. 
Next, I'm gonna give Jerry the hot rock massage, which he definitely needs after skydiving at the beginning of this video. And here I am, possibly making it worse, but I'm just demonstrating some techniques you could do. You gotta really get in there to work out those clumps of stuffing. And next, I'm finally getting to the hot rock portion of this massage by just placing the rocks on his back. If you can't already tell, I do not have any professional spa experience. I don't think I've even been in a spa, so this is all just my ideas of what a spa should be. This video is getting really long though, so I think I should just skip to a relaxing montage of everyone getting the spa treatment. Now that is it for three things to do with stuffed animals, part three. I really hope you all enjoyed this video and try some of these out. Don't forget to give this video a like, comment any video suggestions you have, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Bye! So do a little throw if you want. Oh. Oh. Wow. That was bad. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, that was not enough time. Now for the facial, I might just do a little head massage. Touch the face. before applying